Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of acid-base chemistry at the AP and IB level. We're moving our conversation towards titrations, and as an in, as an introduction to that, we want to talk about indicators. So, all I want to do to start the conversation is to define what a titration is in a little bit uh, more formal terms. So, titration is a technique where a titrant, that's one of the reactants, is placed in a burette and slowly added to an analyte. That's the other reactant, the one that we're analyzing. And a variety of pieces of information we can find out. Um, one is the unknown molarity, but we're going to study titration curves in far more depth than pre-AP is. So we're going to do way more than just the molarity. Additionally, as time permits, we'll see titrations of something other than an acid-base system. We'll do a redox titration in which electrons are exchanged. So that's some of the terminology involved. Now, with acids and bases, what we want to do is add acids and base until it's exactly neutralized. Often until one of the H pluses is neutralized if it's polyprotic. And this is called the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, we have exactly neutralized the acid and the base. Moles of titrant equals moles of analyte. Now, the problem with acid-base situations is that the acid is clear and colorless, the base is clear and colorless, acids plus bases form salt, which is clear and colorless, and water, which is clear and colorless. So we need help being able to visualize or indicate when we have reached that equivalence point. And to do that, we use indicators. Indicators are dyes that undergo structural changes. Remember, structure determines function when they are protonated and deprotonated. This is an example of thymol blue. It turns red to yellow at an acidic pH, and then it turns yellow to blue at a basic pH. So we can see, our eyes can visualize that color change. And when that happens, when we're able to visualize the color change, that's called the end point. So the equivalence point is the chemical equivalency. The end point is when the indicator changes color. Now, uh, that's a pretty complicated structure, so I set up just a generalized equation for a protonated indicator going to a deprotonated indicator as, um, at, at, as we would add a base or throughout an equilibrium. Um, this shows it just reacting with water. Now, let's take a look at the guidelines for how we visualize it. When is there enough for us to know? So the indicator's got to react, and it's got to build up enough of the new structure for our eyes to detect the color change. Now, for most indicators, that happens when the ratio of the deprotonated to protonated form is between about a tenth and 10. So when the deprotonated form is 10 times greater or when it's a tenth of the original. So that gives us, you know, a magnitude, an order of magnitude range. Now, if we plug that into the Ka expression, that means our range is between 0.1 times the H3O plus and when Ka is 10 times the H3O plus. Now, if I took the negative log of both sides, you're not going to have to do that. Here's the take home. I wanted you to see why there was a range. And here's the take home. When the pH is equal to, in terms of pH, the pKa plus or minus 1 is the pH range where it's helpful, where it will indicate a color change for us. So, and uh, uh, I already mentioned this, let me just fill in this blank or we'll have angst in class. Um, it's called the end point. 
So we want that endpoint as close as possible. So we pick an indicator where the pKa is as close to possible to the pH of the equivalence point. Okay, so we'll talk more about, well, how do we know what the pH of the equivalence point is? All right, in this case, we're told that we have an acid that the equivalence point is 3.65. And the question is, would methyl orange be a good indicator? Well, this might be a multiple choice question. They might give you a series of indicators, and you need to be able to look at that negative 4 and know that my pKa is going to be 3 point something. You might not know exactly what, but you should be able to guess the number in front. Well, our range is 3.65, whoops. I mean, you want it as close as possible, but sometimes you just can't get it quite where you want it. So we need the pKa to be plus or minus one. So we could go up to 4.65, or we could go down to 2.65. And we find out, oh, I'm not having luck with this today, and we find out that indeed, yes, the pKa of methyl orange falls right in that range. So here's the pKa, it's gonna be three something, uh, it's gonna fall within our range, okay? and the closer you can get, the better. Now on a multiple choice, it would be very clear from the powers. You wouldn't have to distinguish two of them. You wouldn't have to distinguish one that was necessarily five times 10 to the minus fourth. It would be a different power. Okay, so that's a bit about indicators. More on those as we apply them to titration curves. So this is, as always, signing off.